Hi, this is Dave Clark. Today I'd like to discuss importing data into a SQL Server database. A common request that I get from many clients is to have a way where they can take data from some external source, such as another SQL Server database or another database that's not a SQL Server database, um, and also possibly files such as Microsoft Excel spreadsheets or flat text files in a delimited format or XML formats, things along those lines, and take that data and load it into another SQL Server database. So what we're going to do today, um, prob probably the most common example we get is for somebody that has a spreadsheet from some source. And what we're going to do today is to take the contents of an Excel spreadsheet and load that into a brand new table into the SQL Server environment. Now, there, there are many ways to, to do this. Today, we're going to go over an option which is probably the, the easiest for a brand new uh, SQL Server user, and that's to use the import wizard. There are other ways to do this through SSIS packages, which even through the import wizard you can create, but that might be a little beyond the, the skill set of a beginner. There's also some methods through T-SQL using open row set functions, things along those lines. We'll go over those in, in future videos. So today, we're going to review using the import wizard. Okay, so I'm going to load data into this database called demo test and see if we expand the tables and I'll even just refresh here to show you. There's currently no tables in this database. Um, now, now it doesn't have to be that way, just in my particular example I don't happen to have any, any here at all right now. So what, uh, let's see, what we're going to do is take data from this spreadsheet named customers.xlsx. So if I open this spreadsheet, you'll notice we have three columns in here, customer ID, customer name, and customer ranking. And we actually happen to have three different rows of data as well, for Acme Supply, Johnson Technologies, and company ABC. So we're going to load this data into our database. Now you can have as many columns as you want, as many rows, but I just wanted to make a simplistic example uh, for, for this video. So what we'll do is to actually, um, right, well, it's on the database, excuse me, uh, the database, right mouse button on the database and choose tasks and then import data. And we're presented with a wizard, which just gives us a brief description of what it's going to do. And so I hit next to get past the startup window. And then we have our data source. Select the source from which to copy the data. So this is where our data resides. It defaults to SQL Server native client 10.0, 10.0 being a SQL Server 2008 um, data source. But we know we're getting it from a spreadsheet. So we're going to look for an Excel source in here, and here we have Microsoft Excel. And you can see a lot of the different types of uh, sources you can use. So we'll choose Microsoft Excel, then select the file path. And here I'm going to select my the path to my customers.xlsx file, and then the Excel version. And I believe that I have the 2007 loaded, and if it was an older file version, you could select that as well. And then the first row has column names. Now we happen to already look at the spreadsheet, so you would either need to open the spreadsheet or get that information from the person that you know tells you where the spreadsheet is, whether the first row has column names or not. And it's important to, to note, because if, if the first row doesn't have column names, that means that first row is an actual record of data you want to get loaded in. So we'll say, yeah, that's where the column names are going to come from, that first row. And then where do we want to put that data? So I'm going to put that in my demo instance. I'm just going to use my Windows authentication for the credentials to make the connection. You could specify SQL Server authentication as well if you don't um, use the mixed mode. And then which database are we going to load this into? So I'm going to load this into the demo test DB database. And then we can copy data from the table or view 
or we can write a query to do it. So the copy just says, here, I'm going to get these. This, this is the, the rows that are in here. Here's the columns I've found. We can load it in. Or if you want to write a query to select specific columns or, uh, you know, but if, if you're brand new to this, you're probably not going to be writing the, the T-SQL to, to load that. So usually I'll go over with my clients just to select the copy, da copy data option. Then we'll select Next. And you can see we have our sources from that uh, spreadsheet are listed, and they are the individual worksheets. So one thing that's nice is if whoever is giving you the source data, if they can have the uh, worksheets named something that kind of makes sense. So in this case, our first worksheet was renamed from sheet one to customers. Then the others were left on there. Now, if they're not even going to be used, it's also nice if they're deleted and, and, and not there. But if we were loading, say we were loading customers and then um, products and sales data, you know, we might have names on all, all three of these sheets. And if we didn't, we'd have sheet one, sheet two, sheet three. It's kind of confusing to know what we're loading where until we get to the column data. So in this case, we know we're just going to load our customer data, and these other two are blank sheets. Now, one thing also that I like to do is actually change the destination table name. The dollar is a reference referencing for Microsoft Excel, you know, how it references the worksheets, the dollar sign. But I don't want a dollar sign in my table name, so I'll just go ahead and, and remove that and say the destination is going to go to the DBO schema, but it's going to the customer's table. And we can actually preview and see what we're going to do. So you notice it's select star from customer's dollar signs. That's the source worksheet. And there's the three records that we, that we would get. And if we needed to modify anything in the mappings, we could we could do that in here. You could go into edit the SQL, but if you do that, then you have to maintain everything through there instead of the, the GUI. Again, for, for brand new and run once type things, it's easiest just to do it through the GUI. Um, so create destination table is selected, and then uh, drop and recreate destination table. What that's useful for is if you have some, some data that you're going to load in that you just you, you always need to see that particular set of data, then you drop the table every time and, and load the new data in. There's no like insert if it doesn't exist, update if it does exist, etc. Uh, we can enable an identity insert where each row will get a unique unique column. So here's the source columns and the destination columns. Now notice that SQL Server is figuring out the data types based upon the data in the column and how they're formatted in the Excel spreadsheet. So we have two that will be float or decimal type uh, numeric values. One, the name is going to be uh, NBAR car 255. And if we wanted to change this to you know the size of 50, we could we could do that in here. Like if we knew that the customer name was never longer than 50 characters. So one thing that, that comes into play is you'll notice the column names are going to be named whatever they are named on your source spreadsheet. In this case, customer ID is customer underscore ID. You see that a lot in SQL Server databases where the column name, um, every portion of the name is separated by underscores. Um, you could also see this format like the Pascal or Camel case where the first letter of each portion is capitalized and there's no underscores, everything's just strung together. So customer name. And then there's the customer ranking, which is actually customer space ranking. So that's going to go into our uh, destination table, a column name will be named customer space ranking. And I wanted to give these various examples to see that that's important as well. If somebody's just throwing some stuff in a spreadsheet and giving it to you, this is how it's going to look and how you're going to have to access it from other outside sources like reports and uh, T-SQL statements, etc. So you want to make sure that's consistent. So it's best if it can be that defined that way in a source. If not, you can key in what you want it to look like here. Of course, if you've got 50 columns, it's not, not a fun task to go through and modify each one. All right, so everything looks good there. I'm just going to go ahead and select Next. And then we can choose to run immediately or save as an SSIS package. The Save as SSIS package is great if you want something that you're going to run over and over and over. Um, but then you have to know a little bit about the SSIS package and maybe where you want to store that, how to set it up, etc. It kind of will do that stuff for you here. Um, like whether to load it in SQL Server or the, just the Windows file system, 
um, how you, you know if you want to save the information uh, as far as the protection level the you know whether it's, if you using a SQL credentials to connect you might have a password things like that that need to be saved so that's a little bit beyond the scope of what we want to discuss today but just note that you can create SSIS packages right from from this wizard uh, we're going to choose to run this immediately so we'll go ahead and select next and then we get the wizard telling us the um, what is going to happen basically taking from this source location uh, using this type of provider LADB 12 the location uh, this instance uh, on my machine is the destination location and a destination provider is the SQL native client uh, 10 so it's going to copy rows from the customers dollar sign to customers all right so let's go ahead and hit finish and we'll see the uh, all the information will come up about this you know what we have success there's an information message saying copying and finish success and then three rows transferred and we can click on this but we just see the you know same thing if it was more detailed information or perhaps if there were some error messages and so on um, you know we'd be able to, to click on that for the more, more information so I'll go ahead and just click close to the export wizard and now I will refresh the tables and you'll notice now we have our customers table in the database check out the columns and there's our three columns just just like we wanted so we could make a connection to that database now and we will just select all columns from that table. We'll run that, and you see there we have our data in our SQL Server database. Now, just one other quick point I wanted to mention, uh, which I already touched upon, was the column names. Now, I just did select star here, so it just selects every column. If I wanted to select a particular column, such as customer ID, and you know maybe I want the customer name I can do that but if I wanted to get the uh, customer ranking notice that SQL Server will qualify that with the left and right square bracket so I run that and it works great I, I get the information if I if I was just typing the query and said well the column name is customer space ranking when I run that I get an error message that there's invalid column name customer, but I have customer ranking. Well, what it does is it treats each of these as independent entities. So customer is the column it's looking for. And since there's no comma, then it thinks we're aliasing our column named customer to a column named ranking. It would be this similar to, to doing this. Select customer as ranking, meaning rename it or alias that column to be called ranking. But it doesn't work, so because our customer column, a, custom, a column named customer does not exist, so we simply qualify it like so, and then we can, can get our data out. So if we had um, customer ID, whoops, excuse me, uh, customer ID and customer name and customer ranking, we could select them as well. I believe you may also be able to use the single quotes. No, single quotes is for aliasing something. That is actually just going to put the literal in there for each. So um, that yeah, so we do need to qualify with these. What I was talking about was if you want to name it, um, say you wanted to name it cust rank, notice this wouldn't work either because it's going to name it cust and then it's going to you know say well what's this rank doing out here so here we this is where I was talking we could use either the left and right square brackets now it's called cust rank in our output or the single quotes so but I prefer to use the left and right square brackets everywhere just because then it's always the same you know if you're uh, accessing a column name that has spaces, or if you're naming an alias that has spaces, you know, just use that. All right, so that last piece was just a little bit extra because when you're loading data in from a spreadsheet, a lot of times the person creating it is not in a database environment world and they just type things with spaces because it looks nicer, it's easier to read. But when they come into a database, you may have to handle those in uh, some special situations. So that's the um, video today on loading data in through the import wizard. 
I hope, hope you learned something today. Thanks for watching and have a great day.